Hello and welcome to another episode of the SME Focus Show brought to you by Factory Now TV. I'm your host, Christopher Greeno, and in this series, we will focus on SMEs within the British manufacturing sector. Every week, we will discuss and analyze the opportunities and challenges for the industry in these unprecedented times. I have worked in the sector for over 26 years, and I'm CCO at SDE Technology, one of the leading manufacturers of pressings and assemblies in the UK. As you can hopefully appreciate, this show is very much for manufacturers by manufacturers. My guest today is Jason Aldridge, Managing Director at Arrowsmith Engineering Limited. Jason, nice to see you. How are you? Yeah, very well, Chris. Very well, yeah. thank you. Thank you for coming on the show. Great to see you. Please tell us about Arrowsmith Engineering and what is it you do? Right. Aerosmith Engineering, um, part of the Aeroservices Global Group. Yeah. Uh, we were formed in 1967, uh, based in God's Country in Coventry. Um, the ASG Group's based in Manchester, but we're the little the Midlands outcrop at, at the moment. Um, we've worked in the aerospace industry since 1967. Yeah. Our big customer is Rolls Royce. Um, We've really grown with them. We're very much an aerospace supplier. Um, and we make precision components. Um, in the old days, you'd have called us a, a machine shop. I would now call us a, a high-level technical precision engineering company. Um, but we do turn in milling, grinding, uh, NDT, all those sort of processes. Fantastic. And you, you supply into various sectors. Uh, which of these have been hit hardest by the covid impact and the restrictions that have been put in place um yeah like i say we, we are in various sectors we, we we do an amount of military we do an amount of business jets but our main main um area is aero engine uh, yeah. civil aero engine um and much of that ends up with rolls royce where we're sending it to itp in spain or gkn in the usa or umbrella in brazil um Lots and lots of this stuff ends up on Rolls Royce engines. So, I mean, very fortunately for us, for the last fifty years, um, it, it's a long haul and one of the most successful engines in the world. Yeah, yeah. In the middle of a pandemic, it's not quite as good, admittedly. It's, yeah. <laughs> but who saw that coming? Do you know what I mean? It, it's I can't really complain the industry we're in because it's it, it's treated us well. But yeah, yeah the, the pandemic has hit long haul aero engine quite quite hard and in terms of obviously last year we had the biggest impact hopefully the vaccine rollout now is getting us not quite back to normal but there's light at the end of the tunnel in terms of having to furlough staff or make cutbacks within your company how did it impact you and the team yeah i mean the, the furlough has been brilliant for us um it, it really it really has assisted it's allowed us to stay truthfully profitable um it, it's you've just got to be very sensible with how you work we, we do a lot of obviously as everyone watching is, is doing i should think in a similar position we're budgeting every month we're cutting our cloth to suit so we run at an economical level um yeah. and yeah so the furlough has been the big we have had to make redundancies um and people have retired and we've sent some back to university and that type of thing but not not anywhere near as many as we would have had to without the furlough scheme. Um, so that's that's really helped sustain the business into 2021, hasn't it? Very, very much so, because that was our biggest fear. It, as you know, it takes a long time to um, train up really good skills, certainly in aerospace, it, it yes. does, uh, 10, 10 years plus. Um, so to lose them is a disaster. So... The, the very skilled people we really really have got to and that, that's been our biggest worry and, and the furlough has been brilliant for looking after that and um, i'm going back to 2020 now you received the queen's award for international trade um how has that achieved and how has that helped you continue to grow as a company um yeah hugely proud of that um good news yeah but yeah, a bit of a patriot. So to get the Queen's Award was like a little a little tick that I wanted to be fair. <laughs> um, so yeah, very, very pleased from a personal point of view on that. And for the company, in my opinion, it's it is the the best award. Um 
how we achieved that was basically we grew on our export nine, well, almost a thousand percent in three years. Um, and it was brilliant growth, like I say, to all over Europe, into America, into Brazil. What, what, what made me laugh was that we did that in the three years leading up to Brexit. Um, and we started importing into Europe and all this. Yeah. So it, it, it did make me smile, a bit ironic. Um, yeah, and it, it, it's and the customers love that. Do you know what I mean? It really is um, a, a huge achievement and a great thing to have. Um, I mean, we weren't actually awarded it until probably January this year. So I, I think that the best is yet to come. Yes. And um, so really, we've just we've, we've just received it, um, and since then, obviously with COVID, there hasn't it's reduced our export, obviously quite. Yeah, quite a lot with um, aerospace, but we're very aware that it will help us going forward. Absolutely, um, it's it's a real selling point for your company uh, to be uh, to yeah. be having the Queen's Award is really, as you say, a real tick in the box for a UK manufacturer, and to get it for international trade is just shows how well you and the team are selling the Aerosmith name around the globe. Yeah, very very much so. Um, I, I mean, basically. The, our USPs, we do Rolls Royce work and we're Rolls yeah. Royce approved. And that's a, as you, I mean, as we do, you, if you're saying something's good, it's like a Rolls Royce standard, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, you know absolutely. I mean? yeah. Yeah. And it is that great honor to work and be approved by them. And it does get its work all around the world, to be honest. And you mentioned, obviously, we've got Brexit now and the impact of that, not just on UK manufacturing but on your business. So what impact is that having? But then if you could go on to what opportunities you think it could also bring for your company? Yeah, it's. I always looked at Brexit as a as really an opportunity that, that it almost forces us to look worldwide um, yeah. and sharpen, sharpen our skills on export, um, which, is, which is what we all want. Uh, really, it's, it's about UK PLC, isn't it? And yeah. there's the better exporting further out, bigger opportunities. Perhaps we rested on our laurels a bit with with Europe um, being in it. With to be honest, again, aerospace as a as every industry has had its has sort of been dealt its own cards with with Brexit, um, and certainly with a pandemic. What we did was the, the customers wanted a buffer of three months amount of stock yeah. um, preparing for Brexit, for, for the inevitable delays, which we are seeing some at the moment at, at customs and this type of thing. Um, so they forward order three months of stock, stockpiled, and then unfortunately the pandemic arrived. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and they didn't they, need that stock anyway. Yeah. They did need the stock. So that stock now is worth far longer than the three, three months. months. Yeah. So the aerospace industry is well prepared for Brexit. <laughs> we haven't really got a problem at the borders at the moment because we've we got plenty of gear. But yeah. we are seeing it. We, we are seeing delays due to paperwork, uh, getting in touch with, with the end customer and this type of thing. Um, but it's it, it's as, literally to us as simple as fine. We, we need to extend the delivery period. So yeah. we enter that in the MRP system, start the job earlier, send it earlier to get it there on time. Yeah. Um, and in terms of opportunities that you see, certainly dealing with the rest of the world and not moving away from Europe totally, but not having that focus on the European market as the be all and end all, what other opportunities can there be for UK companies? Well, look, we have got an excellent uh, reputation, haven't we, as manufacturers yep. all around the Absolutely. world? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, America is a huge market. Um, South America, another huge market. Europe is still a massive market, isn't it? To be yeah. fair, our, our major customer is, ends up at Airbus. Yeah. They're not going to suddenly stop using Rolls Royce engines. Do you know what I mean? That is still going to happen. Uh, the reality is, and, and likewise, we're not going to stop driving BMWs, are we? Um, I, in fact, have. And I've just bought a Range Rover. But that, that's irrelevant, isn't it? <laughs> uh, but... I will probably buy a BMW one day again. Do you know what I mean? It, it is. It will continue. Mm -hmm. um, yep. But it, it certainly has allowed that investment by the government. It's opened the government's eyes, the catapult centres. 
brilliant. And they have been brilliant, in my opinion. And that has come off the back of Brexit and some of these other things. Of thinking, yeah, that's put money into the country. Yeah, investing in in our own in our own sector in technology. Where do we need to lead the world? And that, yeah, that is long overdue. That investment by the government, and now they're taking UK manufacturing seriously again, um, which is great news. Yeah, it, it is, and that's what's good for us, isn't it? Uh, yeah. And then we can, I mean, and we we know we can catch up with automation because we're so far behind. Um, I know automo automotive is is quite ahead than a lot yes. of the other industries, but certainly in aerospace and some of the other, there's a lot of automation still to bring in. We've just started doing it, seeing what it can achieve. And you look at it per um, per robot, per cobot, per head compared to the rest of Europe, we, we're far down the league. Yes, so absolutely. just by automating, we can push ourselves up on productivity. Um, I, I, I see it being a once the pandemic's gone, it's been a great 10 years, truthfully. I see, okay, there may be a bit of a rocky road getting over stuff, but I see it being a brilliant 10 years for Britain personally in manufacturing. Absolutely, I totally agree. And what, what do you see as plans for the rest of the year for yourself and the team there? Uh, what has 2021 got in store for Arismith Engineering? Yeah, well, what, what we have been doing is, is we've, we've got a load of research projects with the MTC. We're, we're very lucky that, um, and this might make people so I've been in Coventry, which, which a lot of people don't say is very lucky, but, but we are because it's brilliant. We're surrounded by the MTC, the universities, WMG. We've got a lot. So we've got probably four or five research projects on the additive manufacturing, on machine connectivity, and digital 4.0. We've got degrees going on, apprentices coming through. So from that side, brilliant. But we're, we're pushing, pushing forward. With aerospace, the civil side of aerospace, it's allowed us to contract and grow in our military work, our business jet work, and look into other areas and other customers. So we're looking at picking up work in those areas, which is going very, very well. Um, and then that's waiting for the civil air, civil work to come back, which none of it's been lost. It's just exactly. been moved out. And um, you'll have had you'll have had all the technical and the commercial improvements, uh, exactly. and they'll be ready just to sweep out onto the. Uh, onto the new work so yeah yeah and the reality is we have had to become leaner um yeah. because we're budgeting almost by the day to, to keep um profitable um yes. and it does fine-tune the skills it is in a quite perverse way it, it has been quite entertaining to be honest to have that budget see the drop and think right how are we going to make this work do you know what i mean very quickly mate yes uh, and yeah I, I feel we've achieved been very successful in doing that and um, we've come out certainly strong as strong if not stronger through coming through this i think we're leaner um and we're, we're in a very very good position i mean don't get me wrong i really hope this vaccine works it really is getting a bit monotonous now isn't it <laughs> absolutely yeah we need to we need to release um release uk manufacturing and get back to normal so to speak but uh, the lockdowns have had to be put in place. The vaccine is being rolled out. But it's good to hear your enthusiasm and still uh, entertaining speaking to you as always, Jason. And really good to hear that you're still positive and still looking to grow the company. Oh, very much so, very much so. No, and we, we spoke earlier and it's, it's yeah. good to hear you're doing so well. Fantastic. Good to speak to you, Jason. Thank you for your time today and we'll catch up soon. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. That brings us to the end of another show. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to meeting more of our brilliant SME manufacturers next week. If you would like to get in touch with the show with a comment, a suggestion, or even to appear on a future episode, please email us, tv at mtd.media. Thank you for watching. So from me, Chris G, at SDE, goodbye.